Hello. Okay. So I hope that you had this organized. Um, let's put some dates on these because maybe that will help you organize these a little bit better. Actually, you know what? No, I lied. I want you to tell me what um what goes next, and then we'll put dates on it. We'll see if everybody got similar results or if you got something different. So, what should be next, ladies and gentlemen? So first we have the Nez Perce. Um, first encountered Lewis and Clark and the Corp of Discovery on their journey to the Pacific. Which one goes next? Oh, okay, Ellie. Ellie, we are on 14B, I believe, is the document. Um, let me, is that correct, ladies and gentlemen? I think that's what we use is 14B in your workbook. We cut those out and we're putting them on a piece of paper. Yep. So if you did the cards, here are my cards. Which one goes next, ladies and gentlemen? So, yeah, so those um, that were absent. One, large numbers of settlers began moving into the Nez Perce country. Beautiful. Okay, so what we did is on 14B, we cut those cards out, and then we watched a landscape of history and kind of put these in order. Okay. And I might move them a little bit closer together. On page before, we ended up drawing this, and then we kind of put them our dip in thing. Okay. Um, well, let's put these, what you guys think, and then maybe, actually, you know what? You can come in and you can say, oh, I think I got something different. That's okay. We're doing this together now as a class. See what we did. Riley, what'd you get um, the second one, um, I did, the U.S. government takes back 90% of the reservation land they have set aside in Paris. Okay. Did everybody else, is there so far no. something that you got different? Something you got the I same? did something different. What'd you do different? I said Governor Isaac Stevens established establishes a, re a reservation for the Nez Perce, preserving most of the Nez Perce homeland as part of the reservation because that happened before he took away more of it. Mm, yeah. Okay. Would you guys, the rest of you, agree with that? Okay, yeah, so you have to take, you have to kind of establish, they establish a reservation. I would agree with that. They established a reservation and then the U.S. government took more. Yep, so then it took back 90% of the... Actually, um, it in the video, mm -hmm. it said before he even took back more, gold was yeah. discovered. Mm. So that's in between them both. Okay, would you guys agree? That's what I had. Yeah, so he had... So he, there's large numbers of settlers that came in. Then the governor, uh, governor Isaac Stevens had a reservation, so preserved most of it, and then gold was discovered. And then the government took back of that land because they wanted it for gold. Hey, that um, kind of makes sense. Okay. What? Okay, we've got two more things then. What would you say would be next? Several Nez Perce lands or several Nimipu bands refuse to see sign the treaty, or they order the non-treaty Nez Perce to move onto the reservations. Well, there's one that kind of makes sense. The first one that you read. Yeah, this first one makes a little bit more sense that it would happen first. And then, yeah, this. Okay, so let's put some dates to these. So, this, the first one, large numbers of settlers began to move. That happened in 1855. Yeah, so that happened in 1855. So, ooh, that actually is way up here. So and I'm, I have the space, so I'm going to move it. Maybe you have to move some of your numbers around, too. That's fine. 
Oh, you have the space to do that. Yeah, if you don't have the space, maybe you have to move your numbers. So maybe you have to put 1850 a little bit further at a different spot. Okay, the Governor Isaac. This happened also in 1855. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I, I realize you guys might not have the space. I'm gonna I might not have the space either so I'm gonna move it move these over as well okay and then 1860 ish is when gold was discovered so I'm gonna write 1860 1860 So yeah, my 1850 here, I'm going to move this Ooh. over here. Okay. The U.S. government took back the land. This happened in 1863. Yeah. So a little bit after the 1860s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I get when the several nice Paris bands um, refused to sign the treaty? Sure. Can I I'm guessing 1866 Ooh. or something like that. 1864 to 1866. Yeah, it is 1863. Actually, it was. It took a while to 1877. So there was a lot of fighting back and forth for this. Might have to turn your iPad sideways. So yeah, 1863 to 1877. And then, does anybody want to take a gander? A guess on when the government chose to order the non-treaty? So if they fought till this part, what do you think? 1880. Well, let's see. They fought till 1877. So that's 1883. I don't know, 1877. So yeah, so they fought for what? Um, 1877 to minus 16, uh, six, or 1863, so that's 14 years? They fought 14 years to um, not move. And then finally they forced them. Yeah, okay. So, Yeah, hopefully you had that. This was just kind of a fun activity to do based off of our book. So we can see, so we, we were talking about this conflict in chapter one, that the people are coming and taking the land. We're actually now seeing the extent of how long this was. So it started out, yes, in 1855, where these, where the government and settlers started coming, okay, where, yeah, everybody started coming. So 1855 to 1877. Um, how many years is that? I need to actually write it down. I'm a visual person. I can't do it in my head. 1877 minus 1855. How many years was that? How many years did they fight and try to take over? Ooh, Matthias is a brain. 22. 22. And some of you guys are, you've got some of that mental math. I've done math many, many years, but my mental math, I have to, I'm a visual person. I even have to, I write it down. I don't even have to write it down with on a piece of paper. I just write it with my finger and then I can do it. So it took them 22 years that these settlers came in. And then, oh, oh my gosh, you guys think about that. That's actually a really short period of time. 
when you think that they had hundreds and hundreds of years of living on the reservation, and all of a sudden in 22 years, people moved in and forced them over, this went quickly, super, super quick. They came in, took their land, forced them into smaller land. So let's see, how big is this reservation now? So, um, Mimiku Reservation. See if we can find a timeline. So, oh my goodness. Okay, so this was the Nimupu Reservation. Okay, so actually let me copy this. And let's put this in here. So we have the original where the Nimipu went, this big area. And then they put them into a smaller, so I have a feeling, so this is, no, I don't have a good tool, oh, scribble. So they, they shrunk them into some smaller areas. So they shrunk to probably about here. So not about 90%. And then what do we say? It was how many years later? 55 to 77, so 20, 22. 22 years, they forced them into this little, this green area here, this light green area. So at first they preserved 90% of their land and then they shrunk it to this light green. And then today is that uh, dark green, okay? I wonder, hmm. So yeah, here's the reservation now is this, um, that little green spot. That's what it is today. So it shrunk That's even That's all they get? Yep. That's so, not fair. I, it really isn't. And as you're going to find out next year, um, they, so what they did is they, they they like to pretend um, that they gave them a good deal. So often what happened is they created this treaty. And this treaty said, okay, if... So at first, so they're like, okay, you don't have as much land. So in 1855, they, sh they shrunk it down to 90%, right? Shrunk to 90%. And they were like, okay, we can deal with that. And usually what they do is they gave them money or goods, bienes, goods for their land. Okay, because they're like, you don't need that much. And they're like, okay. They're like, we'll give you money so that you can trade. We'll give you goods, so we'll give you food and stuff. And then, yeah, what happened is in 1877, they had... Um, they forced them into this treaty. So not ev so some so usually what happens is with the treaty, some people are okay with it. So they shrunk it down to that small bright bright green. So it shrunk it to bright green. And they said, okay, if you live in that small area, because really remember, you don't need this land. We'll give you a whole bunch of money mm -hmm, and a whole bunch of goods. So we'll pay you each year for, um, we'll give you food, we'll give you clothing, we'll give you beads, we'll give you rifles, we'll give you horses. They'll give you all this. But, so under the treaty, so shrunk to bright green, so I'll say with the treaty, they received... money and goods. But here's the problem. Do you, are people um, always honest and do they always hold up their promises? No. So the it just doesn't make sense because they get two lands um, and they only get that teeny green dot. Yep. And this is where the problem comes in is they gave up this land under the treaty and the problem was um, these annualidades or the annual um, payments, they were either late or they never, they never came, as you're going to find out next year. So they, yeah, they were supposed to receive money each year, but then they wouldn't. 
And who, who are they? Who are they gonna go complain to? The government? Well, the government's the one who gave it. Who said, "Ooh, no, we're not gonna," we'll, or "We'll give you this." They're the ones that are supposed to be helping them, and so they don't really have anybody they can complain to or to try to fight for or get back their land. Because once they give it up, I mean, they're now in this very small area. A lot of people have been converted, as we're gonna find out, or. Um, these, yeah, they're going to have these late payments. So it, um, becomes kind of a sticky situation. Again, we found out a lot of people really did not want to be a part of it. Um, so how, um, oh, so we kind of talked about this. How does it relate to this? So here is some things we're going to talk about. So this, this conflict, so we've got this big conflict. Okay. And if you noticed with our novels or even this, it's going to happen for a long period of time. So we are just seeing a snapshot. But if you have short stories like um, our monster and the coyote, okay, we are going to have different conflicts in different um, areas. So you're going to see a difference in between our short stories and the conflict in our novels. I know it really isn't fair. And that's why, that's why we um, often talk about these things nowadays and we hope to not repeat this. And we do notice, yeah, that people, it's not fair, but a lot of things in life really aren't fair. And sometimes we can do things about it. Sometimes we can't. So if you notice our conflict, um, just like in The Monster and the Coyote, where was that conflict introduced? Oh, it was very at the beginning of the story. And as you noticed in like the beaver, how it stole fire from the pines or the coyote and the monster, it's usually resolved by the end of the story. So there was something that was, um, it was resolved. Okay. They were able to figure it out. But in our novel, oftentimes we're going to find out that we're going to learn about a conflict, but they may not resolve. Okay. And each chapter often reduces a new, introduces a new conflict. So in this, we might be learning about some of these different conflicts that um, Sound of Running Feet is going to run into. And there may not be a result for it. We may not actually figure out how it's resolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And you guys, there's a good reason to be upset. And like I said, what we can do now is we can learn from these mistakes of persecuting and taking away things from the Native people, and we can apply it nowadays. So, and it it is. It is you learn throughout history. Um, Native Americans, I mean, we still, um, they're still having troubles. They're actually having more and more difficulties nowadays. You can hear in the news. So we only work to give them better lives, though, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, we have, now we've talked about some of these events. So let's see. On this timeline, where do you think chapter one takes place in this story? Where do you think chapter one takes um, place? If there's a lot of aspen trees... Uh -huh. 1855. Yeah, 1855. Uh -huh. So probably around 1855. Um, and um, yeah, we've got all of the, so probably we got, yeah, the settlers coming. Um, we talked about about 1860s when gold was um, around. Okay. Oops, sorry. I've got somebody doing the link. So, I thought you were talking about where we're at, like Montana or like all that. Yeah. So no. In so right now we're assuming she's in, um, yeah, the or Nimi Poo territory. So Montana and Idaho, and it probably is between 1855 and um, 1860s. Sorry, I'm trying to copy something and send it to somebody in your class that needs to get in to our WebEx, so. Let me copy one more thing. Thanks for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so. Yep. 
what do you think is going to happen next? So we think about H55, according to um, the timeline, what do you think might be one of the big conflicts or even little conflicts that might happen next? What do you think? Yeah. Riley. Um, I think that she's going to go, like, back to that cabin and, like, try and convince that as Paris boy or the Nanny Poo boy to come back to their tribe and not work for them. Mm -hmm. Now remember, just so that you know, the um, uh, Storm Cloud, I think his name was, he is actually an outcast. So that might be something important. So if you remembered, um, he, on page four, it says, the boy I knew about, he showed Nimi Poo tattoos on the back of his hands. He had gone to the mission school near Snake River at La Poi, the place of butterflies, his name was Stormcloud, and he um, he had been in he had been mixed up in a murder. Mm. So, who? What else do you think might happen? So we're talking about settlers coming in. So maybe so Riley's prediction is yeah they're gonna come back and she's gonna try getting that boy to come back. That could be. Possible. I think um something really important is that I don't think that when they're saying thunder rolling in the mountains they mean real thunder, but they mean like war. Um, between the settlers and the Native Americans because that can be like something that's like big and thunderous. Yeah. Like a war. Um, that's So I think the conflict it will develop into like a war between the Native Americans and the settlers. So something loud and violent as thunder can often be? Ooh, that's a really good prediction. I didn't even think of that. Anybody else have any predictions? I have no idea. I've never read the book. Yeah, um, like, I'm going to add on Harper's, like, the thunder could be the madness, like, inside of them, like, their thunder in their heart. Yeah, so, like, storms, like, how, you know, storms brew ahead of time, so maybe this is the, um, even the calm before the storm you hear, maybe with hurricanes or thunderstorms. Ooh, anything else, you guys? Any ideas? This is your time to share? You, there are no wrong answers, you guys. Literally no wrong answers. I have, I've never read it. And if you've gone ahead, ooh, awesome. Any other predictions? Okay. So we're going to then compare, ooh, this, look at this topic statement again. So this is more the writing piece. So we got to, we thought about some of this conflict again. And we're going to look more into detail of these comparison and contrast paragraphs. So if you remember, you don't have to pull it up. You can look at my screen. Um, we looked at a com an exemplar paragraph, so a really good paragraph, of the two stories, Coyote and the Monster and How the Beaver Stole Fire from the Pines. Okay, So we're going to think about... What similarities and differences between that you might have noticed between Sound of Running Feet and the other Nez Perce girls? So again, if you think of our, our characters, is that in this one? Oh, no, that's in a different um, PowerPoint. But we talked about, okay, um, we've got her cousins. Okay, we've got um, Little Lark, which is her cousin, and her friends, um, White Feather. And we've got... Um, seven of us, seven of them total. So there's six friends and cousins and Sound of Running Feet. So we're going to look at Sound of Running Feet and compare it to the Nez Perce girls. So what I want you to do is I want you to grab in Schoology, um, handout 14C, experiment with a um, focus statement for comparing contrast statement, okay, or find it in your workbook. Okay, if you've got it in your workbook, that's even better. 14C. And, ooh, my folder did not show up for today. So let me figure out why that did not show up. Oh, no, it did. Oh, here, yeah, I ended up, I got to double check all my stuff. My days were a little off. Okay, so now it'll show up under poor veneer or upcoming if you have to export it. 
So, in my notability, I'm going to put 14C here, or I'm going to open it up in my workbook. So, ooh, experiment with a focus statement for a compare and contrast state, uh, compare and contrast. So, here are some things that, um, so this is an example of an organizer that we are going to end up doing, okay? So let's, can, let's kind of look through this, and on the second page, we're going to write down um, kind of what all these words mean. So we have, I'm going to highlight just, you know what, if you've got some colored pencils, let's, why don't you highlight this as well? Because we've got different things. And all of this is our evidence. And so this is all different. Okay. So how sound of, sound of running feet is different. We have, so this is kind of one section. And, ooh, I'm going to actually write, mark down these girls, how the girls are different. I'm going to mark that in the same color. Okay. Because we are comparing... We are contrasting how they're different here. Okay. And then I'm going to do how they're light, alike in another color. Now, the biggest thing I notice, especially with teaching sixth grade, I've taught sixth grade, oh, how many years now? This is my 11th year teaching sixth grade. And this is my third year teaching fifth grade. I used to teach a lot of fifth grade too, and I used to teach language arts. The biggest thing people forget is how they are alike. So it's super easy to figure out differences in a story, but people often forget the comparing. Okay, so how are they alike? So we want to make sure that we have that. Would somebody be willing to talk about sound of running feet and read um, some of these things? So the evidence and elaborate. Somebody be willing to read? Let's see, I see a hand. Riley, could you read Sound of Running Feet on how some of the evidence and some of the elaboration? Yeah, you want me to read all of that part? Yeah, why don't you read all of it? And then we'll have Nora read how the girls, about the girls and Harper can read how they're, dip, how they're alike, okay? Okay. Um, evidence um, slash source. Mm -hmm. Carrie's a gun taught herself to shoot, page three, mm -hmm. gives directions to other girls, they listen to her, speaks to white settlers about building a cabin on land they do not own. Okay, so what does those show? show yep. Elaboration. Shows she is independent and determined, stands out from the other girls. Shows she is a leader among the good girls. Shows she is bold and willing to confront the white settlers, unlike the other girls. Okay, beautiful. So let's have then, Nora, would you be willing to read how the um, her cousins and friends um, compare? How are they different? Evidence and source. Do not carry weapons or know how to shoot. Listen to sound of running feet. Do not speak to white settlers. Sit quietly as sound of running sound of running feet talks. Mm -hmm. Elaboration shows they hold more typical roles expected of females in the Nez Perce culture. Shows they respect her as a leader. Shows they are more afraid of the settlers and willing to let sound of running feet speak for all of them. Very good, thank you. Okay, um, Harper, would you be willing to tell us how they're alike then? Um, okay, so belongs to Nez Perce tribe, ride horses. Shows that they have shared cultural traditions, values, and ways of life. Work together to gather food, roots, for their community. Page two shows that they share responsibilities as young women in their community. Angry about Jason Upright's accus... Uh, how do you pronounce that word? Accusi... Um, uh, sorry. Um, accusation. Or accusation. accusation. Accusation that their people own too much land. 
shows they are united in their values and feelings about white settlers moving on to their tribe's land. Yeah, so the main thing that I noticed that's really important is with their evidence, they actually gave the page number. So that's where they showed what they're talking about. And then they elaborated, well, what, why, does that, why is that important? So we have, yeah, the differences. Carries a gun, does not know how to shoot weapon or carry guns. And what does that mean? Okay. Gives the directions and then listens. And why does why is that important? One is probably a leader. One is showing respect. And then, yeah, speaking or not speaking to the white people. And so how it might, it talks about their personality. But it also, like Harper just read, talks about how they're the same. So that we know they're both part of the Nez Perce tribe. They both work together um, to help with their community. Um, and they're both angry. Okay, so here... We're going to start out by writing. Um, we're not, we're not going to write a paragraph, paragraph per se, but we are going to use the stuff then to write a couple sentences about how they are alike or different. And this is then if we stuck them together would be a paragraph. So could somebody tell me what is a good sentence I could write for how they are alike? So first we want a complete sentence. Who are we, who are we talking about? First, tell me, yeah, um, start out, who? Sound of running feet okay. and the other girls. Okay, sound of running feet. So go ahead and you can write this down with me, maybe a double screen, dub, doble pantalla. Sound of running feet and her friends, we'll just say her friends, it, we know it includes her sisters. Um, and then, how are they alike? Could somebody tell me again what was something, well, let's say, what, what tribe are they from? Tribe. Yeah, they are a part of the Nez Purse. Oops, it autocorrects Nez Purse tribe and are out gathering um, supplies. Gathering, I'll say roots for their tribe. And then what, what was the conflict that they're both alike with? They're both angry. And you, you said are part of the Nez Perce tribe and and outgathering. Oh, thank you for roots. catching that. For their tribe. Gathering roots or their tribe. For their tribe. Yep, for their tribe. Thank you. Sometimes I type fast. Okay. And how what is what are their what are they angry about? It shows that they're not uniting their values. So they are angry I mean, about. I got, um, I got here late. So what page is it, is it on in our books? Um, this is um, pay. This is fourteen C. Yep, and they're angry. They are angry at the white settlers. Okay, I'm going to put that what they have here for moving onto their land. Hmm, beautiful. So we've got two sentences on how they're alike. Usually, we've got five sentences for a paragraph, so and I think we're going to get that. Ooh. Okay, so how are they different? Let's start out, who do you want to start with? Do you want to start with Sound of Running Feet or her friends? Running feet. Running feet. Running feet. Yeah, so remember, we want to identify who those people are. That's the other thing a lot of people forget, a lot of writers that I notice, is they forgot to mention who they're talking about. They use a lot of they or them or he or he. We need to talk you could say them. Sound of Running Feet is bold and brave and speaks up to the white people. Okay. Beautiful. Sound of running feet is bold and brave. And somewhere in there, she's the leader. Mm -hmm. So we could say she's bold and brave and speaks up for her group. And maybe this could be our elaboration. This shows she's a leader. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. She's a leader and... Ooh, I like how they wrote, and willing to confront the white settlers.
you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put this down below. That way you can, I can have more space to write and you can see better. Um, you know what, actually, I'm going to do a new page, add page. So I want you to be able to see this better. So this is number one. Okay, this shows that she's a leader and willing to confront the white settlers. Ooh, I'm gonna use a transition word, while her friends. We're gonna talk about transition words, um, I think, tomorrow, which is super, oh, we're gonna do a little bit maybe today. So we're going to use a, this word, while her friends. So I, ooh, it, so, or you could say, compared to, I like that word too, that transition word, compared to her friends, whom, how would you say her friends? Do they speak up or they, do they, what are they, what are they like? Somebody help me with the sentence. They just sit in silence and let Sound of Running Feet do all yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. They Since, like to do it yeah, they, I feel like they, um, are like if they talk they feel like they're gonna like mess things up but mm -hmm. yeah so I always put the sound of running feet first because they know that they're the leaders and they'll get it done yeah they sat are her friends sat on their horses silent silently yeah so that we can talk about that elaboration they sat on their horses Oh, horses, horses, silently. I want to point out something else, you guys. Sound of running feet. See how I capitalize different things? We didn't talk about capitalization, but since her name, sound. Because um, of is just like a transition word. You don't really need it. Yeah. So you don't have to capitalize it. Exactly. So of is kind of like what you'd call a less important word. They're all important, but it's less important. Things like ah uh, or the or of. So those couple those couple words, those little words. A lot of yeah, times I was confused. Those. Yeah, I was confused why everything was capitalized except for the o. Yeah, I so that's why I figured I'd let you guys know. Um, because yeah, we've got um, and then sound since it's a her name. That's why most of it is capitalized, but of, it's just kind of a filler word, and that's why that's not capitalized. So that's why you're going to see capital S, little o, r, f. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, you don't have to write exactly the same that I have. So if you wanted to add that sound of running freight is braver than the others, but is angrier, is angry, um, but, they're, she, but the others are maybe angry. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's our challenge? Ooh, compare and contrast the, the both of them. So, ooh, actually, Matthias, what you have would be a good one for number three. Sound of running feet is braver and bolder than the others, but they are both upset over maybe the events. Yeah. So both of them, we put them both. So sound of running feet is bigger and bolder than the others. So I did a com contrast. Mm -hmm. Running feet and the others is the contrast. But then both. Ooh, here's another transition word. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to highlight these. Ooh. Compared to. They both. Or, um, yeah. Hmm. Awesome job. Okay. I want you to turn this in because can this you it for a second so I can copy it. Yep, I'll copy it or I'll leave it there. So when you're done, please turn this in because this now what we need to do to keep it uh, or put it as a um, whole paragraph. So um, 
when I write this, um, can I change a few things up? Yes, you can. You are okay. more than welcome to. So, ladies and gentlemen, so if I wanted to put this in a paragraph, this is how I do it in a paragraph. I'll put it back. But look at we have a whole paragraph, and we included comparing. Sorry, comparing is here, so how they're... Um, Sorry, comparing, so how they're the same, how they're different. And then we did, again, a, what is it called? Both compare and contrast. Okay, so we did kind of our final statement, our conclusion, as you might say. Okay, so we've got our, oop, compare, both parts, conclusion, or contrast, and then our conclusion. Ooh, we, we included all parts of a, um, or of a paragraph, a compare and contrast paragraph. Yeah. All right, I'll give you a couple seconds more. Go ahead and turn it in, like I said, then, you know, I mean, it should be all done. We did it together. I'm burning my coffee. I don't have much. I was here late, so can I submit it in a few minutes? Yes. Okay. And I will also post this video online, so if you need to see it, too. Um, so, I was supposed to... So, if you wrote it in your notebook, just take a picture and send it in. Does that make sense? So, yep, you're turning it in here. Handout 14C, you can take a picture if you wrote it in your um, journal. I don't expect you to write it twice, you guys. I prefer that you wrote it. I accidentally sent two things. One of them is from my math. Just, just have the last one be your other one, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, what we're gonna do really quick is, you know how I said, hey, I think We've got all these parts that we wrote before. Remember these? Remember our colors here? I'm going to use these colors again, and I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to use this to highlight what we have. So you turned it in. If I don't expect you to have these colors, though, but I want you to go back to this document. And let's, let's see, we have our topic statement. We might have to write a topic statement. Topic statement was green. Then we have our evidence. Actually, I can write this here. Just you don't have to pull back. You can or look back at the other ones. I'll show you. So topic statement toe sec. Okay. Then we've got our evidence. Uh, toe sec, and then our elaboration. And then we've got more evidence and elaboration. And then we've got our conclusion statement. Oh, Senior Wurzinger, I think you already talked about some of these things. We did. So we had our topic sentence. I might have to actually write that. We've got our evidence and our elaboration was this color. And then our concluding statement. I want you now, if you still have those colored pencils nearby from what we used before, let, I want you to highlight those colors. You're using those colors. So you guys, which one is our topic? Which one is our conclusion? Which one is our evidence? Which one is our elaboration? So I want you to take your colored pencils and see if you can identify that really quick. Since we did it last time, you should have an idea of how to do it. Mm -hmm. And, ooh, we might have to write a topic sentence. Okay, first. I thought the conclusion was the easiest. Which one is the conclusion, ladies and gentlemen? Last three. Last, last one. one. It was last one. Yeah, the one yeah. in yellow. Because we, we talked about briefly what happened in here again. So they, so she is bold. 
and the so we come we contrasted and then compared to him. Okay, what is some evidence that we have? Um, evidence is that second one to um close. It's like that second one. Yeah. So, well, the first sentence of the second one. Yeah. And the second sentence is um elaboration. And then it goes like that again. Ooh, perfect. Yeah, for the other one. Beautiful. Um, yep, and then pink. So, yeah, so in number two, we have the first sentence is our evidence, and then the second sentence is our elaboration. First sentence, then, or the next sentence on her friends compared to her friends whom sit silent and let son of running feet talk. That's evidence. And then we elaborated. They sat on their horses silently. Same thing with number one. <laughs> Their evidence is their friend, they're part of the Nez Perce tribe. And just in general, yeah, they're angry. They're out and ang so they're out about because they are gathering roots and they're angry. Mm -hmm. So you guys, I would be too. what would be a good topic sentence be? What is this whole, what is this talking about? Who is it comparing? Um, the sound of running feet and her feet. Yeah. The sound of, oops, of running I feet. Why. When I said that, I was about to say S O R F instead of sound of running feet. Yep. Sound of running of running feet and her friends are are they similar and different? Mm -hmm. And different. And maybe ooh, how they deal with the settlers or. Um, how they, in their personalities. Ooh, we talked about their personalities, right? Yeah. So you talked about their personalities and how they approach the white men, the white people. Mm -hmm. Ooh, did you guys notice? Was that easier to write the topic statement at the end? Mm -hmm. Uh, you guys, when I write an introduction, sometimes I'll write my paragraph and then I will write my topic sentence last. That is a very good tip of like when you even in the university is most of the time people write their topic sentences last or they'll write their introduction last because would they want to know, OK, here's the body. Here's what they're going to write about. And then that's what they're going to say. This is what my paper is about. So, yeah, so they talked about, let's see, we talked about, yep, her personality. They talked about the personality. They sit in silence and then how they approached. So they confronted white settlers or sat on their horse silently, okay? And they're both angry. So it still talks about how they approach. So, yeah, beautiful. So add this topic sentence, you guys, and the color. So you don't have to resubmit this. I want you to submit that first thing. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Give you a couple more sec, a couple more. I'll give you thirty more seconds to kind of color these in and finish this. Um. Okay. So, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and you don't have to submit anything. I decided that I'm not going to have you submit it, submit anything. So I want you just to watch, though, um, my, the WebEx. So what we're going to do. We're not going to submit the stuff you wrote down? Or? No, because I, I was okay with you submitting the other stuff. The other stuff we I want you to do, but you don't have to uh, resubmit it, Okay. Because that's okay. going to help you later on, okay? Remember, uh, the homework and classwork, um, as I tell my sixth graders, you're going to find out next year, homework and classwork doesn't count towards your grade, but it prepares you to do your test or your project. So if you don't do the homework, you're going to do pretty bad on your tests, okay? Same thing with this. If you don't do all of the stuff that we did today with highlighting those, when we do our assessment or our test later on, you're not going to know what's going on. 
Okay, so that's why we do that's why we do it. And I this year, yes, you're submitting a whole bunch more things because I can't see if you're actually doing it in front of you. If I was in the classroom, I could see if you were doing it. Okay. So one of the things that I decided I'm not gonna have you submit, but I wanna talk about you guys is these transition words. And if you noticed, I was starting to highlight some transition words compared to, or um, I said, wow, the others, both, okay? And that's what I want you guys to think about too. When we are writing these paragraphs, we are gonna have some transition words. Now, we're actually going to take it a step further because you're Spanish speakers. We're going to look at the transition words in Spanish, too. So here's an example. We have this story of that somebody ended up writing on a paragraph, and they have a transition word. Coyote knows what it will take to defeat a monster, and he does not want to risk failing. He's determined to save animals. Beaver, on the other hand, okay, has a daring plan that involves stealing the fire from the pines and then leading them on a merry chase. They're sure to lose. Okay, so we've got this word on the other hand. Ooh, that is a transition word, okay, or a transition phrase. Both animals, ooh, so both of them. However, well, Coyote's plan involves a lot of preparation and it compares and contrasts again. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you, actually, I want you to take out, if you've got a piece of paper, I want you to just write it on like a sticky note. That works. Or if you want to write it on, in your note, in your workbook, um, if you want just there um, in your workbook, you can write it in your workbook. Okay. I want us to write down what are some other transition words. And I want you to not only do it in English. But I also want you to write it in Spanish. Okay. So, for example, I have the word both. What's both in Spanish? Dos. Los dos. Uh-huh. Here, I'm going to make everything bigger so we can see it. Okay, so I'm going to say both here, and then the translated bit is going to be los dos. Because in Spanish, uh, it's ambos. Or ambos, yep. So you can either, you can actually use, um, either one will work. So I would write ambos, or you would say los dos. Because in English, you're not going to say the, the two. Mm -hmm. That's where it's going to be a little bit different, but that's why we're kind of doing this. So ambos or los dos. Ooh, what is another word? Oh, we had however, right? What is however in Spanish? Entonces, where are we writing this down? I would write it down on a sticky note or a piece of paper. Okay. Um, it has you. Okay. You, want, you know what? Okay. If you are in your workbook, you can write on page fourteen D. Is it okay if I'm doing it in notability? Yeah, that works. Yeah, I'm okay that. just doing it on a sticky note. Sticky note works. In notability. Yep. Notability sticky note. Beautiful. Ooh, what if we have similarity? Similarity. So similarity, they both are very similar. Maybe I would write con similitud. Okay. Or maybe um, tienen semijesas. Okay, or semi-hansas, sorry, semi-hansas. 
Can you guys think of another word? So what if we're comparing something? So if I have similar, so they're similar, how would you say that's different? What's the word more different? Or you can say like similar. Oh, similar, yeah. Oh, oh, the Beautiful. Okay. Um, you could write como diferente or differently or different. I would sometimes write como different. So una diferencia. No, the red one. That's a difference. Yes, it's less. Don't touch the inside. Do it. I totally forgot about it. <gasps> hey, Riley, do you want to mute your thing? Oh, sorry. Okay, let's see. Some other words I have here, and then l let me write them down, and then I want you to think about what they are in the other on the other one. So we've got in addition to. In addition Ooh, I cannot spell. In addition to, or I have but, <gasps> or unlike. Ooh, what are some other Spanish transition words? Like in conclusion. Ah, ooh, I like both of those. We could do that with, um, well, in conclusion is kind of like with our separate, with our concluding statement. So not necessarily from compare and contrast. I, I would definitely use that in my document, but not necessarily compare and contrast. Maybe I write pero in comparacion, in comparison. Oop, I want to send a key. What are some other things in English or Spanish that you can think of? Have to say that they're the same or different. Ooh, tambien. Ooh. Also, ah, also, uh huh. How do you say some of those? O E, yep, and mm, oh, además. It's like tambien. Además. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, hopefully I want you to save this somewhere. Maybe let's put a title to this. That way you can remember. Let's write transition words. And I don't want you to lose this because when we write our stuff later on, I want you to use some of these words, whether you're in Spanish or English, okay? And I want you to use these, okay? For homework, you have 30 minutes of reading today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye.